First, I'll talk about what you will need to build this game system. A laptop, a USB speaker, a TV as the extended display, which is optional, a tripod with cell phone mount, a high-quality shielded USB cable extension, or you can use 1 meter long micro bit compatible micro USB cable, a tape measure, some cardboard, 6 arm band phone holders, 11 BBC microbit version 2 single board computers, 10 microbit AAA battery holder with switch. Next, I'll explain how is it even possible to build this game system with BBC microbit, something looks like a toy. In this experiment, I will demonstrate how the microbit can be used for motion detection. In this setting, two microbit are used. This microbit and its battery pack are fixed onto a small plastic card. This microbit uses internal accelerometer to detect if I'm moving. Now I will switch it on. When I move, this microbit starts beeping and transmitting the detection result wirelessly to the other microbit, which is connected to my laptop via a microbit compatible micro USB cable. If that microbit receives a signal indicating that I'm moving, it controls the box on the extended display to change color. When I move it, the box turns red. When it stays still, the box turns green. Next, I'll put it in an armband phone holder which, uh, and wear it uh, on my right arm, which is a requirement during the gaming process. Not shake my head lean forward lean back move my right hand breathe deeply so you've seen that any movement in any part of my body will cause a change in the balance of my whole body which will cause my right hand to move which can be detected by the accelerometer on this microbit Next, I'll explain how the radio signal strength measurement feature of a microbit can be utilized for proximity sensing. 
In this experiment, the beacon in my hand will continuously send a 2.4 GHz radio signal with the message being the letter A. That microbit, designated as receiver 1, is used to receive the radio signal. When receiver 1 receives a, a letter A, it will display the received signal strength on the bar graph. As the beacon gets closer to receiver 1, the purple bar goes up. As it uh, gets away, the purple bar goes down. Next, I will add three more receivers designated as receiver 2, receiver 3, and receiver 4. Receiver 2, receiver 3, and receiver 4 communicate with receiver 1 wirelessly. When the beacon is close to receiver 2, the yellow bar goes up. When the beacon is close to receiver 3, the blue bar goes up. When the beacon is close to receiver 4, the pink bar goes up. Next, I will explain the characteristic of uh, the microbit version 2 trace antenna. When the microbit antenna transmits a signal, the direction of the strongest emitted signal is perpendicular to this circuit board plane. I'm holding the microbit board facing you, so the strongest emitted signal goes right at you. I found this result with experiment. I also asked Microbit Foundation staff about this issue, and they confirmed that the direction of the strongest emitted signal is roughly perpendicular to this antenna plane. Based on my experiment result, this direction is also the best direction for receiving signals. Therefore, in this setup, I wear the beacon on my arm and uh, the microbit antenna face the horizontal direction while receiver 2, 3, 4 all have antennas facing upwards. This causes receiver 2, 3, 4 to only be able to receive relatively strong signals from the beacon on my arm when I'm very close to them. By using this kind of setup, this system can detect if players wearing microbit beacons have approached the finish line. My experiment also shows that the higher the beacon above the floor, the stronger the signal which receiver 2, 3, 4 can receive at a further distance. Therefore, before the game starts, all players need to adjust the beacons on their arms to the same height. So, if I'm taller than the rest of the players, I may need to lower the beacon. If I'm shorter than the rest of the players, I need to move this beacon up. Receiver 2, 3, and 4 all have antennas facing up. They are unable to receive signals from beacons at a distance, so receiver 1 is specifically used to communicate uh, with the beacons on the player's arms at a distance, detecting if a player is moving. Under conditions without strong radio interference, receiver 1 can cover a distance up to 25 meters, so the distance from the starting line to the finish line can be up to 25 meters. In the actual game, the distance between receiver 2 and 3 should be 1.5 meter. 
Receiver 3 and uh, receiver 4 should also be 1.5 meter apart. This can roughly generate a 5 meter wide finish line. If you don't understand what I'm explaining now, it's okay. Now I'll explain it in another way. This is the trace antenna of the microbit version 2. I initially thought that direction 2 and direction 3 would emit the strongest radio signals, but diffraction 5 perpendicular to the microbit circuit board is the direction that emits the strongest radio signals. Additionally, this circuit board plane direction is also the best direction for receiving signals. This image shows the configuration of the game system. Receiver 2, 3, and 4 are placed at the finish line. Their receiving antennas are facing upwards. The distance between receiver 2 and receiver 3 is 1.5 meters. The distance between receiver 3 and 4 is also 1.5 meters. This is receiver 1. Its antenna is facing forward. With this setup, receiver 1 can communicate with the beacons on the player's arms at a long distance. When setting up this configuration, it's important to ensure that nothing gets in between the communication line between receiver 1 and the rest of the receivers on the floor. When a player reaches the finish line area, he or she needs to leave the finish line area, so he or she would not accidentally block communication lines between receiver 1 and uh, the receivers on the floor. Because antennas of receiver 2, 3, and 4 are facing upwards, when players are far away from them, the signals received by them from the beacons will be very weak. When the beacon approaches them, the strength of the signal received by them will increase rapidly. A threshold for receiving signal strength can be set. When adding one of the receivers on the floor receives a signal strength that exceeds that threshold, it can be considered that the player has reach the finish line. The accuracy of such a proximity system can reach about 1 meter. Because the distance between receiver 2 and 4 is 3 meters, the width of the finish line is around 4.5 meters. So in this game system, the finish line is not a single line but an area. When you reach this area, if any one of the receivers on the floor receives a, a beacon signal strength that exceeds the threshold, then it is considered that that beacon has reached the finish line. Next, I will briefly explain how radio signals are transmitted in this system to avoid beacons simultaneously sending information and jamming each other. Now, I'll take detecting the state of player 1 as an example to explain how the game system detects if a player is moving or has reached the finish line. First, receiver 1 sends the information SA when Beacon 1 receives the information SA, it will send back a capital letter A or a lowercase a. When Player 1 is not moving, Beacon 1 sends a lowercase a. When the beacon detects Player 1 is moving, it sends back a capital letter A. Player 1 is now running, so 
the beacon one on player one's arm will send back the capital letter A. If there are no play other players blocking the signal, receiver 1, 2, 3, 4 will receive the letter A at the same time. Because receiver 1, 2, 3, 4 all work on the same communication channel. In order to avoid jamming, when receiver 2 receives the letter A, it will wait for 5 milliseconds. Then it will relay the signal strength of the received A to receiver 1. When receiver 3 receives the letter A, it will wait for 10 milliseconds. Then it will relay the signal strength of the received A to receiver 1. When receiver 4 receives the letter A, it will wait for 15 milliseconds. Then it will relay the signal strength of the received A to receiver 1. Next, the system will send string SB to scan player 2's status, followed by sending string SC to scan player 3's status. Then sending string SD to scan player 4's status. The scan duration for one player is uh, 20 milliseconds. The system currently supports a maximum of 6 players, so the total scan duration for 6 players is 120 milliseconds. In this game system, receiver 1 is connected to a laptop. A processing program runs on the laptop, showing remaining time and uh, playing voice instructions. When a cell phone tries to search a Bluetooth device, it might jam this proximity sensing system. So cell phones should be placed 5 meters away from the finish line area. And players cannot carry phones or use Bluetooth devices while playing this game. I'll talk more about radio interference in another video. Next, I will show you how to make a cardboard card for fixing the micro bit and its battery pack. I like to put the microbit in a nice silicon cover. However, it also covers the antenna of the microbit and reduces the emitting and receiving power. So I need to cut part of the silicon cover to expose the antenna. If the armband phone holder has a thick plastic cover, you should also cut a hole on it. In the next video, I'll talk about the code for the receivers, beacons, and the remote control.